Now that spring is finally here and the temperatures have increased, I've been able to take the row cover off of the field. Just like the plants in the greenhouse, these plants need to be cleaned up for the harvest season. Soon the plants in the field will be clean and they'll begin to set fruit. As soon as the harvest season begins, we're going to go visit some of the participating growers in our research study and find out their opinions on the new selections. We've been very fortunate to work with great growers in our state. and One of them is Dave Specka. And as you look around us here, you can see that he takes really good care of his strawberry crop. And we've been fortunate to be able to get some of our new cultivars from the New Jersey Agricultural Experiment Station on Dave's farm. So Dave, what do you think of some of the new cultivars that we're testing out here? Well, I'm real excited about what I've seen in the, in the field so far. I think that compared to the commercial varieties that we're growing, uh, both for size and, and flavor, one of the problems we have with our commercial varieties is they tend to be inconsistent. You, you'll go and from one plant they seem to be pretty good and the next one not so good. Um, I think in your trials that we've seen so far they're consistently good. This year is particularly we've, we've had a lot of rain you know things are a little bit uh, uh, tough out here. Sure yeah and, and actually in addition to all the rain we had a really cold long winter too. Um, so I was pleased with how the plants came through the winter um, with, with the floating row cover to protect them. Um, compared to our commercial variety I, I think that the berries are larger and uh, also sweeter. So that's definitely a, a step in the right direction when it comes to uh, you pick strawberries. So that's, that's a major part of your business at this point? That's right. So our farm is almost 100% pick your own. Uh, we pick a few flats for, to keep it to scale for, for people that uh, can't get out into the field. But for the most part, it's all picked by uh, the customers that come in. What do you think some of the barriers are for you to you know, expand your strawberry operation right now? Deer issues are, are one. The electric fence that we put around the plot seems to be working pretty well. I think some of the other challenges are, are just you know, things that are weather related, uh, the diseases that would come in on, on a wet spring. And, and I think if it's a, a sweeter berry, a bigger berry, that's all good for, for the pick your own business. I'm here with Lisa Specka and um, I want to get her opinion on some of the new selections we have growing out here in the field. So Lisa, what do you think of some of these new ones? Uh, I think some of the new varieties have real promise. Uh, the shape of the berry on some of them especially is, is really appealing to our retail customers. They have nice round shoulders and a, a sort of a heart shape. So people that do a lot of baking or dip them in, in chocolate really like that classic strawberry shape, especially if you get a big sized up red sweet berry. There's a lot of leaf cover on the plant so they don't scorch when it gets really hot, which we can't control, especially after a rain. There's a lot of flowers on some of those varieties, so they seem like they'll be good producers for us. All right, April, I'm coming for you next. I am Samantha Janney. I'm a new farmer. I've only been farming for about five years. So what I want to do is start to integrate strawberries into the CSA and the roadside stand and I'm looking for as much information as I can gather. Cooperating and working with other groups from around the country is very important to bring new varieties to New Jersey. I am happy that Walmart's getting behind local produce and helping with the Rutgers strawberry varieties. I'm Midge Hauser from Hauser Hill Farms in Old Bridge and we're here today to sample some new strawberry varieties. Strawberries are a very important commodity for our farm stand and for farmers markets especially because it's the beginning of the season and people are really looking for fresh fruits and vegetables in the beginning of the season so it's very important to have new fresh varieties, new types of varieties so that the, com the customer can continually come for something new. So many customers that ask for specific Rutgers product, whether it be tomatoes, strawberries, so when they hear that Rutgers is involved in new breeding and new varieties, they want that product immediately. So it's good to have that to tout to our customers that Rutgers is involved in the breeding process and having new varieties to have on the stand. Hi, my name is Ken Whiteman from Whiteman's Farm. I'm here at the Twilight Meeting in North Jersey which is dedicated primarily to strawberries, where we're seeing firsthand the results of the Rutgers breeding program and the success of that program in relation to some of the material that's already out there. For those of us that are farmers, we've all realized that the farmer selling directly to the consumer 
is our best financial activity. Uh, the reward are t is 10 times better than trying to wholesale. My name is Greg Donaldson from Donaldson Farms. We are a family operation. Uh, we farm about 1,200 acres. That consists of uh, fruits, vegetables, grain, hay, and of course strawberries. The project that is funded through a grant from the University of Arkansas uh, and Walmart, I think it's really important for us here in New Jersey because most varieties of strawberries are grown for other parts of the country. And um, New Jersey used to have a, a large strawberry acreage uh, many, many years ago. Uh, but that has gone on the wayside once California came out with their plastic culture growing system um, and kind of left us behind. But now we're, we've come up with our own growing methods, but we don't really have a variety that does uh, really well for us in this area. A Jersey specific strawberry bred and grown for our, our climate, um, I think it's going to be good for not just us, but also for the customers. There's the novelty of having a, a Jersey bred uh, strawberry, kind of like uh, you know the Jersey tomato, like a, a Ramapo tomato, um, or the Rutgers tomato. If we, if we had a, a strawberry variety that was uh, notable to New Jersey, maybe called the Rutgers variety or something like that, I think it would be a really big hit. So it's clear that farmers and consumers are excited about these new strawberry varieties developed and tested on small farms in New Jersey and other northeastern states. Thanks to the National Sustainable Strawberry Initiative, funded by the Walmart Foundation, the breeding work of Dr. Jelinkovic and our research team has now come to fruition, and our varieties have moved from university trials to on-farm production. But there's more work to be done, as excitement about these new varieties is spreading. Both growers and consumers welcome new choices of berries with better flavor. Mm. This is a win for everyone, small farms, consumers, and our research team at Rutgers University. Thanks to Walmart Foundation for making this all possible.